What's the word, y'all? We just got an instant hardwood classic game one. If you're a neutral fan like I am, this is exactly what you want from your NBA Finals. In 20 years, it's going to be the height of the offseason, and they're going to be playing the replays of Game 1 of 2022 NBA Finals. Y'all know me if you've been around this channel. I'm not one to overreact, especially not to a Game 1, especially in the NBA Finals. we got two very, very talented and gifted teams and two very, very smart head coaches. A lot of things are going to be changed throughout this series, but boy, this gave us everything. We got the amazing swings. We got crazy shot making. We got good defensive adjustments at halftime. We got an amazing Steph Curry quarter. We got um Al Horford blowing kisses to, to his family in the crowd. Derek White get the Fred Van Vliet post baby bump. Today's video is brought to you by Prize Picks. Hit that link in the description to download the Prize Picks app and use code Kenny because they're matching all deposits for new users up to a hundred dollars. Prize Picks has been a presenting sponsor on this channel for the entirety of the 2021-22 NBA season. And we're only a little bit away from being over, which is weird. The way this works, you pick some of your favorite or least favorite athletes, you pick some categories, and you decide over and under on those categories. Like, if you would have predicted that Al Horford was going to score 20+, plus, put the over, and boom, you would have been in the green. If you would have predicted that Jason Tatum was going to struggle tonight, boom, you put the under on his points, and you would have been in the green. It can be just that simple. I created a whole group chat with me and the homies at the beginning of the season to see who can win the most. Spoiler alert. It was me. They gave up. I'm <laughs> I'm still here. Still fighting, man. You know, I, I love this because it added another element to watching these games. I'm using it also for baseball. They have other sports. They have esports as well. So download Prize Picks. You code Kenny because it is uh, the real deal. Let's get back to the video. This was great, man. Usually, you know, when I'm watching these games, I'm in a party with like me and the homies, but my pops came over and to watch this game with my pops is crazy because we had like the, the same ideas as we was watching this one. Like when Iggy, legit, I'm telling you, bro, it's been so long since we've seen Iggy hoop, like for real, for real. When Iggy hit that three, me and pops looked at each other like, what? You know, and all of that changed. We get to the third quarter and the Golden State Warriors look like the most dominant team of all time. And then just like that, it only takes a couple shots. It only takes a couple shots. Whole momentum swings. And now Peyton Pritchard and Derek White are doing a uh, Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen impression, becoming the greatest duo of all time. The Boston Celtics just stole game one on the Warriors who had not lost a game at the Chase Center this entire playoff run. They won game one in the Chase Center where their all-NBA first team player shot 17% from the field. Fi final fourth quarter was 40 to 16 and one of them was like a three that didn't matter. Me and Pops looked at it. It was 40 to 13 when they pulled the starters. I, I'm just, I'm at a loss for words. And like I said, I'm not one to overreact from, from a game one, especially when we have Steve Kerr and Ime Udoka, who we saw at halftime, how e not easy, but how how talented these coaches are. Let's let's start off in the first half, everything we saw. It felt like the lights were extremely bright for the Boston Celtics. If you get a, for a first quarter where Steph Curry gets three, and I counted three wide open threes, it wasn't like transition threes. These are like in the half court where the Boston Celtics, Marcus Smart is looking at the next person, next person looking at Marcus Smart, like what the hell just happened? You got three shots like that from Steph Curry, and he was making them count. That first quarter, Steph Curry performed, was like, oh, Oh, snap. He been here with y'all been talking. He been here with y'all been talking. Then we get to the second quarter. He sit a lot in the second quarter because he played the entire first quarter. I don't think he scored a single basket in the second quarter, but it was okay because you had some other people uh, uh, there to alleviate the pain. But one one thing me and Pops were talking about was like Steph Curry had this crazy first quarter, but it's still at the end of the first quarter, the Warriors are only up by four. That boded very well for the Boston Celtics that Steph just had an amazing performance and we still only two possessions away from, from having this game. And then you saw that in the second quarter. Quarter. The Boston Celtics score a lot more. The defense gets a little bit more locked in. And like I said, Steph Curry ends up with zero in the second quarter. And we go into halftime feeling like it, this can go either way. And then boom, things change. Once we got to the third quarter, I love the, the adjustments that Ime Udoka and the team, team ran. Because like early on, so I, I talked about this in our preview about the, the defensive versatility from both of these teams, right? Early on, for some reason, I was very surprised to see them running a ton of drop coverage with Steph Curry. We were running these picks and they were going under the screens and stuff. I'm like, do we not realize that this is the greatest shooter of all time? And then we, we got to the third quarter and they were still running some form of a drop, but they weren't dropping too much. I remember a play in the early third quarter where they ran a pick and roll and Robert 
Robert Williams is maybe six inches away from Steph Curry, uh, opposed to like two feet. I, I, I'm not good at measurements, by the way, so it could have been either closer or further. But either way, they were playing a lot higher in the third quarter, and that kind of ruffled Steph Curry's feathers. He wasn't getting the same shots. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't getting the same shots, same looks as he was in the first half, but it didn't matter because the rest of the Golden State Warriors came to play once we got to that third quarter. And then we get to this third quarter, they made one, two, three, five, six threes. The Golden State Warriors made six different threes, and then when I think Iggy hit that one in the corner, I think that was uh, the third quarter. And a lot of the things that we said in our pre preview start to come to fruition where I talked about the dry streaks that you see in the Boston Celtics offense from time to time. That literally happened in that third quarter. And I had people tweeting me like, hey, everything Kenny said in this preview is coming true. And, and then it did it <laughs> because that dry streak turned into Niagara Falls or something. And once we got to the fourth quarter and I could not believe the shot making early on, the shot making was left, right. It was Boston hit one. And then now the Warriors hit one. Boston hit one. Now Jordan Poole's coming to hit another. And then, well, that, that was it. Oh, we're talking end of third quarter, early fourth quarter. is going back and forth. And then we got to the fourth quarter. There was nothing that the Boston Celtics could throw at the rim that didn't look like it was going in. I think they started seven from seven from three. And the performance that we got from Al Horford just made me smile. Again, being the guy that played the most amount of games without a conference or without a finals appearance and him to come out here and perform um, a form performed so great was amazing for him but me as a fan I was excited for him and I'm recording this like right literally right after the game ended so I can't give you the actual plays of these things but in the fourth quarter Al Horford had 11 points at one point he went on an 8-0 streak by himself he had two wide open threes and then he had like a step back shot in the in the like short corner I'm like bro I don't I, what do you do about that um, Jalen Brown, yes, Jalen Brown, until we got to the fourth quarter, we shooting 16 for 17. I remember the graphic very vividly. And then we get to the fourth quarter, he had four straight shots. Like, it was, it was possessions where they started to switch. Well, not started to switch. There was a lot of switching in this game because uh, they, they were matching each other. You saw the Warriors go small, and then the Boston Celtics matched that. We're having Al Horford as the only big. And then we have Peyton Pritchard. We have the Jays. And the, it was Peyton Pritchard, the Jays, Derek White, and then Al Horford. So they switched in pretty much everything. And same thing with the Warriors. And then we get to the early this fourth quarter, uh, you get the switches where Jordan Poole is on Jalen Brown and that was like barbecue chicken for Jalen Brown in the fourth quarter and he took advantage of those things and he got them going in a game when we got to the fourth quarter Jason Tatum didn't score he was a plus 27 but didn't score in the fourth quarter bro Derek White we need we need to start having this conversation about <laughs> about the postseason baby boost now I will go out on a limb and say that man, this probably not working for everybody but in recent NBA history we saw two people turn into fathers in the midst of a postseason run and just play the best basketball of their lives right after it I'm a new father could y'all say in the last month you seen my my content get better probably not but in the basketball court man we saw Fred Van Vliet do it in their finals run and then now Derek White we talked about in a preview where the Warriors were going to give Derek White that Tony Allen treatment they got that to an extent uh and when he was open he made them pay hell when he wasn't open he made them play pay because that shot on the left wing it was like last couple seconds of the shot clock he like threw it up there and it went in that was the moment I knew this was a wrap for this game even though we got the crazy offense that can be in the Golden State Warriors that shot right there was the was the silencer of the crowd after that shot I'm seeing people walk out of the arena because they knew if he's hitting that then we don't stand that much of a chance and they didn't the fourth quarter was about as amazing as you can get as again as a neutral fan watching this because it was so much Warriors in the third quarter it felt like nothing that the Boston Celtics could do was gonna bring them back into this game and well they did now let, let's let's talk about the things that we saw and what we can take away because again like I said I'm not a guy that's going to overreact to these games right um I, I said very early on how like you had the crazy great Steph Curry quarter and yet you were just four points away that's a pretty good sign for the Boston Celtics but if I am the Warriors and I am a Warriors fan I think I'm going into game number two thinking, ain't no way in hell they going to have another quarter where they hit all of those shots. Could be wrong. It is the finals, right? It only take a little bit. It only take a little bit. You only got to win four out of seven, right? And you, they stole one. But if I'm the Warriors, I'm like, I, even though Derek White has been amazing for the last four games, I don't know if we need to guard him like he's the second coming of Fred Van Vliet. We all know we need to guard him like he is actually Steph Curry. Let's see if he could do it again, right? Let's see if Al Horford can continue to hit his shots, even though, like, uh, I did a live stream for Bleach Report um, earlier today, and in it, it showed, like, in the regular season, Al Horford shot 33% from three, and in the postseason, he was shooting, like, 42% or something. So the postseason, Al Horford might be a real thing, um, but 
some of the other things, maybe you don't trust as much. But then again, you cannot trust that Jason Tatum's going to have another game where he shoots 17% from the field. In our preview, we talked about that that game felt inevitable. And the odds of them winning that game felt like close to zero. But they did. Stealing game one on the road in a series like this is so very crucial. Because the Golden State Warriors, we, we, we've talked about this stat a few times on this channel. Um, so the entirety of the Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Draymond Green era, they always steal at least one road game right and how dominant they had been in the at home and you knew that they was going to steal one but you know like i said every streak is meant to be broken you needed to take game one or game two and now you're playing with house money at this point if you're the boss of Celtics. obviously you don't play with your food if you could replicate things in game number two you got to do it my boy you don't play with your food but you walk out of game number one knowing that if we lose game number two we still have home court advantage, and we feel damn good about it. That's got to that's gotta be a great feeling. I know that the Warriors coaching staff are going to make whatever adjustments is necessary, so, you know, it is a better game for them once we get to the fourth quarter. But, wow, this game was amazing. What I, what I didn't like from the Warriors – um, in this one is the is the amount of we gotta in this run type shots that that were attempted early in that fourth quarter when the Celtics were doing their thing. It felt like they had got away from all the fluidity that had had them the lead and kept them the lead through the first three quarters, and it just felt like they were trying to hit that silencer that that like let's let's kill this momentum shot. And, and Draymond Green in this one got got him it. This is this is a a ridiculously terrible performance from Draymond Green. One thing that Draymond has been amazing at throughout his career is is understanding that the the open three pointer that the team other team is giving me is gonna be there at the beginning of the shot clock and also at the end of the shot clock. So let's let's use that time in between and try to get a better shot, whether it be Steph, whether it be Clay, whether it be whoever. And then if if not the materialize, then I'll take that shot with two seconds to go. I thought in this game he he was trying to fill himself a little bit too much. You feel me? He's trying to fill himself just a little bit too much, taking those shots earlier than you really need him to. And I don't know what he shot from the field. He ended up shooting. Okay, the, the, num the, <laughs> the numbers match that as he shot 2 for 12 and 0 for 4 from 3. He also missed all three free throws. I didn't even repeat that. So it's just a really bad performance from Draymond Green, who obviously is a very cerebral person. And I don't expect him to, to, to take those shots again once we get to the second quarter. Because I think he he's a very self-aware guy. It's one thing I learned from listening to his podcast and, you know, being a fan of his for some time. He's very self-aware. And I'm sure when they watch that film, he's going to realize, damn, I was kind of bugging in this one. Because he was. I can't help but to think about, again, uh, just, just thinking about game one, how amazing the Derek White trade has looked so far. You know, we got to the regular season. I definitely remember some C's fans being like, man, he can't shoot. He hasn't been shooting well. Boy, his defense is still good, but man, he can't, he's a liability offensively. And he had been. But again, he's la this. I guess these are the moments that Brad Stevens envisioned when he made these trades to pick up Derek White. Because, boy, he has been incredible. You know what? He had a performance in the playoffs with the Spurs. I think he had a 40-piece with the Spurs, if I'm not mistaken. I got to go look it up. Because if I'm not mistaken, Derek White had a ridiculous game in that one playoff series um, that the Spurs ended up in. Oh, he's been in two playoff series with the Spurs. Why do I only remember one? It was against, He played against the Warriors. Um, but, you know, he played 18 total minutes in that series. So I'm going to... I'm going to act like that one didn't happen. But game three versus the Nuggets, he had 36. That's what I'm thinking about. He had 36 points in 2019. And in this one, how, how did you get it? How did you get your 36? He only hit a three. He hit one three. He was getting downhill. He had 15 made field goals and only one made three. That's insane, Derek. Um, so these are the moments that I guess Brad Stevens and Vincent. And boy, between that bringing back Al, um, what else is Brad Stevens? Was that Brad Stevens or was that Danny H? Either way. They've done a, a damn good job over these last couple years um, putting together the team for this moment, and they capitalized. They took game one at the Chase Center. So the guy with the uh, Boston Celtics banner tattoo, he is three wins away from being a prophet. I hope he put some money on it when he got the tattoo because I know he spent money on the tat. So I hope he also put a, put a little cash on them winning the championship because that if they do it, <laughs> I mean, that could have been a nice little bag. So let me know what you think about game number one. Let me know your predictions for game number two. Is there a world where the Boston Celtics go up 2-0? And, I mean, they already stole home court advantage, but winning another game is like, it's beyond stealing home court. You damn near guaranteeing the series. Game two for the Golden State Warriors is a must-win game. Thousand percent. So they need to come out and perform, man. Uh, you enjoyed the video? Leave it a like. Cannot wait to talk to y'all again about game number two. We probably have a video in between that, you know, talk about some offseason stuff with some other teams. But until then, I appreciate you.